As always, Headphones Neil bringing you my reviews for this Thanksgiving weekend. So for the this episode, it is going to start, or I'm starting a little bit early as far as the ongoing reviews go, but I'm still going to have in the show notes the ongoing stuff that um, I'm up to, and I'll make a mention at the end of the episode, along with um, a couple of other shows as well that are going to be on my radar. So to start off this week's reviews... I did have a chance to watch Gladiator 2, and overall, I want to say that the critics' reviews of about, of about 71% or so were about on par, just because, for me, I wasn't all that impressed with the film. Um, if you heard my hot take review earlier in the week um, that I put up on the YouTube channel, it kind of is along those lines where... They tried to start the film much in the same way as Gladiator 1, but they didn't do as good of a job as that, where they tried to do what they've been doing when they make sequels, is they kind of summarize the same, or what the prior movie did, so that you're kind of getting the same scenes and story, but in a more condensed format with um, less exposition, less um, development, and that sort of stuff. So. You're less engaged and less caring about what the what the characters are up to, so from there that it all kind of went downhill from there. Um, and before I forget, I am going to mention that this review will be spoiler filled. So um, the main spoiler though is not a huge spoiler if you read the description of the film because by the time you get done with the initial big battle scene, you realize that the main character is going to is the son of Maximus, which they kind of Thing. For me, it was kind of implied, but I've heard arguments where um, it is actually well, or people were able to easily figure out that Lucius is Maximus's son. But for me, it's like it was more of an implied thing based on what happened in Gladiator One. So, um, with that being said, um, in the first thirty minutes or so, you're kind of realizing that um, the rest of the film is going to be a matter of the rest of the characters finding out who he is, they're going to spend time where Lucius is going to hide his identity, and um, um, from there he's going to ultimately have to reveal himself, and then he has some time where he has to reveal it to his mom. Um, so with that, it's like, alright, well, that, okay, I can live with that, but I guess, kind of, but the rest of the, or the part of the movie that was actually spent developing the characters was it pretty much overshadowed that and then um the acting of like pedro pascal which i thought was underused they didn't spend enough time developing his character arc so for me it's like all right well denzel washington's character was so well done the two emperors were very also very well done so to me it's like all right well that kind of is why i gave it a grade of a c because those characters were really good, but then Pedro Pascal and Lucius weren't as good, so um, I don't know. For me, it kind of was just, it was very sluggish, it was hard to get through. It was a lot of rehashing, well, you know, what happened in Gladiator 1, we're not doing this in Gladiator 2, and um, everyone coming to the end realization that Lucius is Maximus' son, and um, Denzel Washington is playing his part for to play the characters against each other, and no matter who um, comes out on top, he's gonna also be the winner, or he's gonna ultimately hold all the keys, have all the power, and all of that good stuff. So, um, for me, I guess it's okay to um, treat it as a film that's kind of dealing with the effects of um, what's his name, the son of. The emperor guy who took, uh, who killed his father and claimed power, and this is kind of the end result of dealing with that, I guess, which is fine. But for me, it's almost going to be to the point where we might need a director's cut that better elaborates on 
um, Lucius is live up, leading up to where he was at that point so we can get up to um, his story for how he got married, his interactions with all the characters who ended up being um, kind of mirror images of the characters or the, all the gladiators and people that Maximus meets as far as other gladiators. Um, the emperors being kind of the new versions of the emperor guy who um, played by Joaquin Phoenix and all of that stuff. So for me, it's like it's an okay film, and especially coming out of Gladiator One, it felt okay. But I think we're gonna need maybe an expanded edition or director's cut that expands more of Lucius's life and what he was up to, um, a little bit more of Pedro Pascal's life. Um, and maybe leading up to his marriage to um, Connie Nielsen's character and all of that stuff. So for me, it's a kind of a meh recommendal or recommendation. I gave it a solid grade of about a C. Um, if you watch Gladiator 1, the gore, or the extended edition of Gladiator 1, the gore is not as too much more than what you get in that film. But um, the story just... It, for me, it relies too heavily on the first one. There's way too many parallels, and they it's not that they needed to take it too far, it's just that the stories that they were telling um, were too, um, too much, or not explained very well. They were not evenly distributed for to give enough, all the characters enough to, uh, room to breathe, and they spent too much time relying on the first film to make it um, a film that could stand out on its own, on its own, and um, make it a good movie. So, if there is a director's cut that ever gets released, we'll see if that fixes it. But for me, it's an average film. And beyond that, the only other thing that kind of made it okay was one of the things I realized when I watched Gladiator One is when you listen to the music of the film. A lot of the notes were very similar to Pirates of the Caribbean, especially in the opening sequence and throughout the film, to make it kind of like the pre-Pirates of the Caribbean score that would make it, you know, Maximus's theme. So there wasn't anything that kind of stood out to me this time around like that, but maybe on another watching I'll be able to notice things like that. So um, the other thing for me that I'm going to try if I ever do rewatch it or once it's available for streaming is to give it a watch as if it's the first film and treat this as Gladiator 1 and kind of swap the films to see if that makes them any better. Um, so for completionist sake I would recommend watching it. It's not a terrible film but it you know like I said it relies too heavily on, on Gladiator 1 and doesn't give the characters room enough to breathe and make it its own good film so I give for me it's a grade of about a C. Um, other people you might like it but for me it was only okay and you know Gladiator 1 definitely is the better of the two films. Um, so with that being said as far as other stuff that I've had a chance to review and do um, Ice Cube's latest album Man Down was recently released um, or since my last podcast episode and so I've had a chance to listen to it a couple of times so Overall, a very good um, album. Um, it starts kind of along the lines as a continuation of his last album, Everything's Corrupt. Um, but then it takes it to a point where um, it got me actually thinking that with all the um, features on the album, because you have, uh, it's a, you know, it's an Ice Cube album, but you have features by Snoop Dogg. Um, no Eminem, but you do have um, Exhibit on there, So, but you do have a Snoop Dogg album coming in December, so it almost makes me wonder if um, they're trying to, if they're going to ultimately aim for a Dr. Dre album or an NWA album, because you have um, Cube and Snoop Dogg albums in one year and L an Eminem album in a year, so they could potentially set up for a you know, an NWA album to get all get the group back together and, you know, have Eminem in the group or have Dr. Dre release a new album because part of me is like it's not going to happen, but I'm part, kind of hoping that we get that album in 2025 um, as, you know, the Chronic 3 or whatever, even though he said he, Dre said that he did retire from rapping years ago from, I think his last album, I was, last album was called, I think it was just called Compton or something like that, but... 
Um, overall, for me though, um, for Ice Cube's album, back to the point at hand, Man Down is a good um, album. It kind of um, continues on that like funk, funkadelic style as a continuation from Everything's Corrupt, but then also goes, but then it transitions nicely into some good, um, very bass heavy beats. So. Um, it's My Ego is a good um, title track and single, but then um, as far as other tracks go that I really liked, um, there's two of note. Uh, the first one is the track with Exhibit called Break the Mirror, partly because I am a uh, Exhibit fan, but also just because the um, beats and the bass on that track are great, the raps are great, rhymes, all of that. It's a great um, track to listen to. I can't get enough of it. Um, but as far as a track that has, um, as far as just rhymes, in, or not rhymes, but as far as just the beats and the background um, music on the track goes, um, Scary Movie is actually a really good track. So um, if there, I guess if someone puts an instrumental version of that up anywhere on YouTube or something, or that's ever released, that's a really good track that I really like. So um, I definitely recommend listening to the album, though it's a good um journey through Ice Cube's flows as far as the current state of things as a good continuation about current culture and stuff like that. So I definitely recommend giving it a listen. Um, so with that being said, that's really the bulk of the um, episode. Um, as far as other stuff I've been up to, still playing Real Coaster. I'm still on the same level I was on last, or I might have finished last week's level, but I'm on the new level, still working on that. Um, I think I have, I'm nearly to the end of that level, but I didn't get a chance to finish it in the week I, w I was hoping, so um, I'm still playing that and I'm sticking to that release schedule of every Saturday of all the videos, so um, look out for those, but still a very formulaic gameplay. Um, depending on when you listen to this episode, I'm li um, I should be done with the fourth chapter of Ev Eternity 2, the medieval chapter, so I want to say that so far that's probably been my favorite um, episode of the game, partly because I'm biased towards like medieval levels and theming and things like that, as far as castles and scenery and stuff like that goes, but overall it's just been my favorite fun game or set of levels to play so far in the game, so um, there's that, so just uh, nicely progressing there. Um, and then as far as upcoming reviews, um, I just barely started watching Dune Prophecy, so once I've finished that season, I'll give that review. Um, and then if I have, like, good thoughts on that to make, like, hot takes or something, I'll do that, but I probably won't review that till I'm done watching that season. And then same thing with, um, Star Wars Skeleton Crew that's coming out at the beginning, or that's starting to stream at the beginning of December, so I'll do the same thing there that I'll... Um, if I make it through the whole season, then I'll review the season when it's done, but if I end up not liking it, then I'll give my quick review there that I probably won't watch it because it didn't intrigue me or whatever, but so far it seems pretty interesting, so, um, there's that. And then I'm still working my way through the Star Wars films for my 2024 review of the Star Wars saga. So that's all there is for this particular episode review and, um all that stuff. So um, for this Thanksgiving weekend, I thought I would do something a little bit differently and release um, the episode to all services at the same time. So patrons, YouTube, and the public RSS feed. Um, so everyone gets it at the same time. But as usual, um, if you want the ad-free version, then, or I guess in this case, it's all at the same time. The, if you want the ad-free version, you can definitely check that out on the uh, on Patreon at patreon.com slash patelin01. Uh, the gameplay videos are up on the YouTube channel at youtube.com slash patelin01. And of course, the website is headphonesneal.reviews for all uh, for past episodes, subscription links, all supporting or all options to help support the show, um, links to the social media sites I'm on and all of that good stuff. Um, and because Blue Sky is the big thing and has seen a lot of growth lately, yes, I am on um, Blue Sky, so that link is up there if you want to follow me there um, and all that stuff. And I don't think I've mentioned it enough, but something that I've enjoyed doing with my Ev Eternity 2 gameplay 
is putting up a preview of each level that I've been playing, or basically it started as a thought that I would do each gameplay for the uh, level of the game, thinking that I would do, you know, if whether I did one at level at a time or multiple levels, that would do a preview, but I've been doing a level by level preview in addition to the gameplay, so you got a feel for, a quick feel for what the level's like, and then a link to the full video so that um, you can check out uh, whichever one you want. If you like the preview, check out the full video and things like that. So um, something that I'm planning to continue doing with all my gameplays is um, for every episode or every gameplay video that I upload, regardless of how I upload it, I'm going to do a preview video. So you get that quick one minute YouTube short of the gameplay. And then if you want to check out the full gameplay, then there's a quick link to it. So just something I thought would be a pretty nifty way of using the YouTube Shorts platform along with uploading a full high resolution HD version of the gameplay. So that's all there is for this particular episode, set of reviews and all of that good stuff. Thanks for tuning in, being a supporter and subscriber to the show, all of that good stuff. But thanks for tuning in.